Hare Krishna. So yesterday um, was a special day. Uh, we talked about Raghunath Das Goswami and uh, today we'll cover Raghunath Bhatt Goswami and Krishna Das Kaviraj. So Hare Krishna dear devotees, thank you for joining us today. Uh, let's go for Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Bhatt Goswami. So he was uh, born in 1505 until 1579 in East Bengal. His father's name is Sri Tapan Mishra, who received the mercy of the Lord. How? In his Giriyastha Leela, the Lord once went to East Bengal. So this Lord is uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to the Padma River, where he was visiting a professor of grammar. There he met Tapan Mishra. Tapan Mishra is the father of Raghunath Bhatt and made his acquaintance. Tapan Mishra was an Eastern Bengali and was a pundit in the Shastra. Still, although he had given great consideration to both the practice of perfection and the perfection of life, he was unable to ascertain their inner meaning. One night he had a dream and in his dream, a divine person came before him and said, Mishra, don't worry. Sri Nimai Pandit has just arrived near here. He will teach you both the practice of perfection and the goal of life. He is not a man, Nara. He is Supreme Lord, Nar Narayan. Although he is the creator of the universe, he has accepted the form of a man in order to deliver the world. Saying this, the divine person disappeared. The following morning, Tapan Mistra set out to find Shiman Mahaprabhu, whom he saw sitting on the bench near his home. His brilliant effulgence illuminated his courtyard as if the sun had descended before him. The Panmishra offered his obeisances to the Lord, falling at his lotus feet. He said, O most merciful one, I am most fallen. Please be merciful to me. The Lord smiled affectionately and offered him a seat, asking the Panmishra to introduce himself. Having introduced himself, the Panmishra inquired from the Lord about all the truths regarding the practice of perfection and the goal of life. Mahaprabhu said, in every millennium, the Lord advanced himself in order to deliver the fallen souls and instruct them in the appropriate form of worship for each age. In Satya Yuga, meditation. In Tatya Yuga, sacrifice, fire sacrifices. In Dwapa Yuga, deity worship. And in Kali Yuga, Sankirtan is the process for attaining the ultimate salvation. Um, in each of the four ages, there is a particular process for deliverance. In the age of Kali, this form of dharma is Nam Sankirtan. In this, way, the Lord, in this way, the Lord in his form as a spiritual teacher informed Tapan Mishra about the real welfare for, all, for the soul, as well as the true position of dharma in the age of Kali. That is Nam Sankirtan. He explained that apart from the holy name, nothing else will be fruitful and always take to the chanting of the holy name of Krishna as follows. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, 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 Hare Ram, Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram. So this is fantastic instructions for us. Don't have to worry about too much else. Just chant. Perfect the chanting and we'll attain the Supreme. The Panmishra, upon hearing the instructions of the Lord, offered his obeisances at the Lord's feet with all his limbs prostrated upon the ground. When the Lord was about to leave for Navadvip, he wanted to accompany the Lord on his return journey to Navadvip. The Lord, however, ordered him, soon you will go to Kashi. There we will meet again. At that time, I shall instruct you further in all the truths. Saying this, the Lord set out for Navadvip. Soon thereafter, the Pan Mishra and his wife left for Kashi, which is also called Varanasi or Banaras. And then some years later, out of the mercy of fallen, for the fallen souls, Mahaprabhu took sannyas and went to reside in Puri on the order of his mother. After staying there for some months, he went through the Jarikhand forest on his way to Bindavan, passing through Kashidham Varanasi at the bathing ghat named Manikarnika. He began chanting the holy name of Hari and uh, exhorted everyone else to do the same. Haribo, Haribo. 
just at that time, Tapan Mishra was taking bath at that very ghat, hearing the holy name of Hari being chanted so loudly. He was astonished because this was a place of learning, you know, and sannyasis would be there, the Mayawadi sannyasis. They wouldn't chant the holy names. <laughs> so Tapan Mishra was surprised. He looked across the gut and saw on the banks of the bathing gut stood a sannyasi of unprecedented beauty and stature. In complete amazement, the Pandit Mishra thought to himself, who is this great personality? Could it be possibly Nimai Pandit of Navadvip? I have heard he has taken sannyas. Could it be him? <laughs> so he got out of the water, looked more closely. He was certain that it was indeed Nimai Pandit. After so many days, he had finally met the Lord again. With great affection, Tapan Mishra brought the Lord to his home. There he washed the Lord's feet and drank the holy water together with his family. He placed his little son, Raghunath, so this is Raghunath Bhatt, at the lotus feet of the Lord and made him offer obeisances. The Lord took the boy upon his lap and cradled him with great affection. Meanwhile, Tapan Mishra quickly made arrangements for cooking and Balabhadra Bhattacharya cooked. He made arrangements for the Lord's bath. When the Lord had finished bathing and performed his noon duties, the Lord ate. Tapan Mishra's little son, Raghunath, massaged the Lord's feet and the Lord took rest. Thereafter, having instructed the devotees for a few days in various ways, the Lord set out once again to continue his journey to Vrindavan. He would deliver Kashi with the mercy of Krishna later on his return journey to Puri. So the Lord went to Vrindavan. And after spending some time in Vrindavan, wondering about in the ecstasy of Prema Bhakti, the Lord returned to Kashi. This time, the Lord spent 10 days in Kashi. And Tapan Mishra's son felt himself supremely fortunate to be able to serve his Lord and Master, Mahaprabhu, for 10 days. When the time came for the Lord to bid farewell to the devotees so that he might again set out for Puri, the devotees were heartbroken in agony at the prospect of separation from the Lord. Raghunath but fell before the Lord, begging him not to go, held his lotus feet, weeping again and again. The Lord took the boy upon his lap and gave him many reassurances trying to console him. The Lord responded, you must serve your father and mother here, and then you may come to Puri Dham and see me again. <laughs> then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fed, uh, bed farewell to Kashi forever and began his long journey by foot to Puri. Within a short time, Raghunath became expert in Sanskrit grammar, rhetoric, poetry, gradually became became highly learned in the revealed scriptures. He continued to serve his mother and father into their old age as the years passed. When he came of age, Raghunath was ordered by his father to go to Puri to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Raghunath's ecstasy knew no bounds, new boundaries, had no boundaries. In service to the Lord, Raghunath's mother had prepared various kinds of delicacies to be offered to him by Raghunath. On behalf of the Mishras, all these fine delicacies have been carefully packed together in a big sack. <laughs> After receiving the orders and blessings of his parents, Raghunath left with a servant for Puri. On the road, he met a Rama Bhakta, a, a devotee of Ram, who joined him in traveling to Puri. His name was Sri Ram Das. By birth, he was a Kayashta, that is, he took birth in the caste of those who work in the service of the king. He was a highly learned scholar in the interpretation of that great epic, the Ramayan. So Ramdas, he bowed down before Raghunath and took the dust of his lotus feet. He then snatched the sack of delicacies from Raghunath's servant and began to carry it on his head. Raghunath said, you are a learned scholar, what are you doing? Ramdas said, but the G, I, I am the lowest of Shudras. It will do me some good to serve a Brahmin. Raghunath replied, Panditji, please, I beg of you, let my servant carry the heavy sack. At this, Ramdas surrendered the work of carrying the sack to Raghunath's servant. 
on the way to Jagannath Puri, Raghunath Das, Raghunath Bhatt uh, discussed many scriptural conclusions with Ram Das. And they arrived in Puri and offered obeisances to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And at that time, the Lord greeted him, Raghunath. He picked him up from the ground and embraced him. The Lord inquired about the welfare of Tapan Mishra and his wife and asked about Chandra Shekha, as well as all the other devotees in Banaras. Raghunath Das related all this to him and told him everything. Sri Ram Das was brought to the place of Mahaprabhu. So Sri Ram Das offered his obeisances. So this is uh, <laughs> the difference of how the Lord treats um, devotees and uh, others. But the, um, Ram Das offered obeisances. But the Lord, who is super soul within all living beings, detected that Ram Das was maintaining desires for liberation within his heart. As a result, the Lord was not affectionate towards him. So this is an incredible lesson that uh, comes from this, that even we don't want anything for ourselves, including going back to Godhead. <laughs> because all we want to do is serve the Lord. What he decides where we should be is up to him. This is quite a tough, um, this is a tough ask. Because we always want to get out of this material world. But we have to leave everything in the hands of the Lord. Everything. And have no desires except to serve him. Wherever that is. Whether it's here. Or in hell. Or in heaven. Or in the spiritual world. This is a very high level uh, of Krishna consciousness. But that's the level that Mahaprabhu operates at. Otherwise, as you can see here, Mahaprabhu didn't show any affection to Sri Ramdas. <laughs> the Lord ordered Raghunath Bhatt to go to the deity of Lord Jagannath after bathing in the ocean. Raghunath went with the other devotees to the beach where they all took bath in the ocean and then went to see Lord Jagannath. Afterwards, he returned to the place, Lord's place, and Mahaprabhu ordered him, his servant, to give Prashad to Jagunath Bhatt. The Lord took care to see Raghunath's Prashad and lodgings. <laughs> Raghunath would cook for the Lord on a regular basis. He stayed in Puri for eight months in the service of the Lord, and thus experienced great happiness. He witnessed for himself the ecstatic singing and dancing of the Lord in various moods of divine ecstasy before the Rath Ratyatra car of Jagannath. After some time, Mahaprabhu ordered him to return to Kashi. He told Raghunath to see to the service of his aging father and mother and explained to him that as they were Vaishnavs, they were not to be neglected. Mm -hmm. Raghunath Bhatt took his, this order of the Lord very seriously and the Lord began to instruct him on many other points. He ordered Raghunath not to marry. He told him to study the Shastra. Told him that after some time, he should again return to Puri to see the deity of Jagannath. Mahaprabhu gave him a tulsi garland from his own neck. The Lord also gave Raghunath Bhatt some Mahaprasad to be distributed among the devotees associated with Tapan Mishra and Chandra Shekha in Kashi. When it came time to say goodbye, Raghunath Bhatt's heart ached. He fell at the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu, offering his prostrated obeisances. The Lord helped Raghunath to his feet, gave him a hearty embrace, just as before. Bidding farewell to Mahaprabhu and Jagannath Puri, Raghunath Bhatt started on his way back to Kashi. Upon return to Kashi, he served his parents carefully and began studying the Srimad Bhagavatam in earnest. After some time, his mother and father passed away. And Raghunath, adhering strictly to the orders of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, never married. So without any family responsibilities, he went to Puri, to the lotus feet of the Lord. And the Lord was very happy to see him. And hearing of the passing away of Tapan Mishra and his devoted wife, Mahaprabhu spoke of their great devotion at length. 
and glorify them. Raghunath Bhatt was very happy to once again have the association of the Lord. He remained in Puri and served Mahaprabhu faithfully for another eight months with his cooking kit and button and austerities. And then one day the Lord told him, you must go to Vrindavan. You have much work to do in Vrindavan. I, have, I must stay here in Puri for I have been ordered by my mother to do so. As a result, I cannot finish the work I have to do in Vrindavan. It is up to you to help me finish my work there. Hmm. What a task. The Lord would only give that to a confidential devotee, not just anybody. Upon hearing these words, Prakunath Bhatt was sorrowful at the prospect of having to leave the Lord again. The Lord explained to him that in Vrindavan, he would meet Rupa and Sanatan. He was to study Bhagavatam and related um, reviewed scriptures under their guidance. They were the scholars. On the Lord's order, Raghunath but prepare to leave for Vrindavan. He bid, fa bid for farewell to the Vaishnavas and again fell at the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu for the last time. As Mahaprabhu was saying goodbye to Raghunath but he gave him a long Prashad garland and some Dambula Mahaprasad and embraced him. So then Raghunath Das, he, Raghunath Bhatt, he set out on the same path to Vrindavan that was traveled by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in this way, he walked along the long road to Vrindavan. Raghunath Bhatt would hear again and again of how the Lord passed on the same road. He would hear of the Lord's glories and how he visited the different holy places and performed various pastimes. When he finally arrived in Vrindavan, Rupa and Sanatan were very happy to see him, affectionately embraced him, embraced him. All the Goswamis who stayed in Vrindavan with them were overjoyed to see him. They all accepted him as their affectionate godbrother. And he was very blessed with humility and meekness. So it's also recorded that Raghunath Bhatt would recite Bhagavatam before Rupa and Sanatana. And when doing so, he was overwhelmed with ecstatic love for Krishna. By the Lord's mercy, he would be overcome by the symptoms of ecstatic love of Godhead. Tears, choking of the voice and trembling. Overwhelmed in this way, he would not be able to continue the reading. It is said his voice was as sweet as a cuckoo. Cuckoos. And when reading the Bhagavad, he would sing the verses in many different tunes or rags. In this way, his reading was especially sweet to hear. He was fully surrendered to the lotus feet of Gaura Govinda. Those lotus feet were his life and soul. After some time in Mandavan, Raghunath Bhatt arranged for his disciples to construct a te temple for Govinda. He prepared various ornaments for Govinda, including a flute and sharp shake, shaped earrings. Raghunath Bhatt um, would neither hear nor speak about anything material. He would simply discuss Krishna and worship the Lord day and night. He would not listen to blasphemy of a Vaishnava, nor would he listen to talk of a Vaishnava's misbehavior. He knew only that everyone was engaged in Krishna's service. He did not understand anything else. This is very, very high level of Krishna consciousness. Generally, only the Lord has this capacity. But Raghunath Bhatt Goswami had it as well. When Raghunath was absorbed in remembering the Lord, he would take the Tulsi garland and Prashad of Jagannath, given by Mahaprabhu, bind them together and wear them on his neck. <laughs> so, regarding the spiritual position of Raghunath Bhatt, the Gaura uh, Ganodesh Dipika states in Vrindavan Leela of Krishna, Raghunath Bhatt was, is Sri Rag Manjari. So, his samadhi is in Radha Kund. There you go. And uh, here's Rag Manjari, very close to the divine couple. So let's move on to Krishna Das Kaviraj. He's the 
amazing person, uh, personality. He was born in 1496 in the Nadia family of Brahman physicians in the village of Jamatpur within the district of Bhardhanam and near Katwa in West Bengal. His father was Sri Bhagirath and his mother was Sri Sunanda. He had a younger brother named Shyamadas. The deity of Gaura Nityananda installed by Krishna Das is being worshipped here, there. In Chaitanya Chaitanya Adilila, fifth chapter, Krishna Das related, relates the cause of his leaving the family life. So this is really amazing pastime. And he, he writes about his little biography. Lord Nityananda had a servant named uh, Minaketan Ramdas, who was a reservoir of love. So at my house, that's Krishna's Kaviraj's house, there was Sankirtan day and night. Therefore, he visited there, having been invited. Absorbed in emotional love, he sat in my courtyard and all the Vaishnavas bowed at his feet. In the joyful mood of the love of God, he sometimes climbed upon the shoulder of someone offering obeisances and sometimes he struck others with his flute and or mildly, mildly slapped them. When somebody saw the eyes of Miniketan Ramdas, tears would automatically flow from his eyes to, for a constant shower of tears flowed from the eyes of Miniketan Ramdas. So sometimes there were eruptions of SSC like Kadamba flowers on some parts of his body. Sometimes one lip would be stunned while another would be trembling. <laughs> Whenever he shouted aloud the name of Nityananda, people around him were filled with great wonder and astonishment. So one respectable Brahmin named Gora, uh, Guna, Gunarnav Mishra was serving the deity. When Mini, Nimi, uh, sorry, Mini, Nina, Mini Mini Ketan. Ketan was seated in the yard, this Brahmin did not offer him respect. Seeing this, Ramdas became angry and spoke. Here I find the same second Ramaharshana Sutta. Mm -hmm. who did not stand to show honor when he saw Balaram. After saying this, he danced and sang to his heart's content, but the Brahmin did not become angry, for he was then serving the Lord. At the end of the festival, uh, Minaketan Ramdas went away, offering his blessings to everyone. At that time, he had some controversy with my brother. This is Krishna Kaviraj's brother. My brother had firm faith in Chaitanya, but only a a dim glimmer of faith in Nityananda. Knowing this, Ramdas felt unhappy in his mind. I rebuked my brother. These two brothers, I told him, are like one body. They are identical manifestations. If you do not believe in Nityananda, you will fall down. If you have faith in one but disrespect the other, your logic is like the logic of accepting half a hen. It would be better to be an atheist by slighting both brothers than a hypocrite in believing in one and slighting the other. Mm. So Ramdas broke his flute in anger and went away. That time my brother fell down. That night, because he was pleased with the chastisement Krishna Das gave his brother for offending his dear devotee Miniketan Ramdas, Lord Nityananda appeared in his dreams and declared, um, Oh my Krishna Das, do not be afraid, Gautam bin Navan, for there you will attain all things. So he received this direct order from Nityananda. And, and although he was old, old man, Krishna Kaviraj was pretty elderly at that time, he went to bin Navan. <laughs> the lotus feet of spiritual master of Krishna Kaviraj are none other than Chaitanya, Nityananda. And he accepted um, Rupa, Sanatan, Jiva, Raghunath, Raghunath Bhatt, and Gopabhatt as his instructing spiritual masters. Mahaprabhu's Vindavan devotees approached Krishna Skaviraj, asking him to write down a full version of his pastimes, for he had not been done. And it would be forgotten if it's not done. There was another biography written by uh, Vindavan Das Thakur. But that only covered the early pastimes of Chaitanya. So Krishna's Kaviraj 
um, he gave descriptions of pastimes which were left out by Vrindavan and Das Thakur. And that book is called Chaitanya Charitamrita from Lokanath Goswami and Raghunath Bhatt Goswami, um, Krishna Das Maharaj, uh, Kaviraj. He begged permission to write this Chaitanya Charitamrita. And Lokanath Goswami, he told Krishna Das Kaviraj that don't mention his name. He's very humble. <laughs> That's why there's hardly any mention of Lokanath Goswami in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And then Krishna Kaviraj, he went to the deity of Madan Mohan, asked for permission to do, to write this commentary, this uh, biography of Chaitanya, and also in front of all the prominent members of the community in Vrindavan. The, uh, in fact, the garland from Madan Mohan fell at that time, and they took that as a sign that the Lord approves of what Krishna Kaviraj is going to do. And uh, he was given that garland. It was placed on his chest. And he joyfully took the garland as a symbol of the Lord's wishes and began to write the biography of the Lord. Not an easy thing to do. He also wrote Govinda Lamrath, which is really a very confidential book about the pastimes of the Lord. Krishna Kanamrath commentary. And according to the Prem Vilas, however, Krishna Das Kaviraj took initiation from Raghunath Das Goswami. In the temple, there is a wooden sandal which is said to have been Krishna Das Kaviraj's. His cottage and samadhi are in Radha Kund, and his disappearance took place after that of Raghunath Das Goswami. On Shukla Dwadisi Titi, this is uh, his samadhi. And where is Krishna Das Kaviraj? Very important part of of um, Krishna Lila, there he is. He is a manjari called Kas, what's that? K A S T E N. Kasturi. Kasturi. Oh, Kasturi, yeah. Kasturi, yeah. Kasturi manjari, yeah. Good, 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 good. The oldest existing copy of Chitani Charitamrita is here. This is, where is this place? Uh, this is, they've kept it in the Vindavan. Research Institute. It's very, very old. Very, very old. This was written over 500 years ago. So, Krishna Kaviraj Ki Jai. Okay, are there any questions or comments? Otherwise, we can continue. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Hare Krishna. Yes, one thing I would like to ask you, this Kali Yuga will be uh, going for 500 years, 5,000 years, I think so. 500, oh, no? Yeah, 5,000 years. 5,000 years. Uh, and the formula we must use is to chant the holy name. Hmm. But when Kali Yuga finish, hmm. what will happen? Ah, what, okay. will, what will do? Yes, Kalki Avatar will come and yes. he will start the new uh, age of Sati Yuga. Yes. And Satya Yuga will be back to where the, you know, the, the um, meditation the, process, the life, mm -hmm. yeah, lives of human beings is increased. And then yeah, yeah. The four pillars are there, four pillars of yeah, religion are there. And yeah. the process of uh, realizing God changes yes. from Harinam to uh, meditation. meditation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In so. the next Kaluga, which I want to know, mm. in this Kaluga, we are we are we are supposed to chant the holy name as mm. we are doing. We are doing Sankirtan. We are doing everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that and the task is so, somewhat a bit easy, but what will happen to other Kalugas? So same, Kalugas. same. It's always the same, the same process. Holy name. The same process. Same process. Be, be, the only you know, the, ah. the, those mentality are changing day by day. Yes. Today, yes. There's, a, there's a little boy uh, just uh, uh, trying to beat his father or, uh, or beat his mother. All these yeah, yeah, nonsense yeah. are being heard. You know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Some crazy stuff going yeah. on. This, this, will, this will continue then. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It gets worse. <laughs> it gets a lot worse. Uh -huh. but, but, um, we pray to Krishna will not come here again. <laughs> mm. But it's up to him. 
we serve and it's up to yes, the lord it is, how it, is it is a bit up on us also so that he, he, he instructs us to follow the four regulatory principles yeah. of the associate with devotees and chat mala yeah. and do not associate with not devotees whatever whatever so, so mm. the difference are, between this yeah. kali yuga and other kali yugas is chaitanya mahaprabhu has yes. himself come and given this uh, opportunity of uh, prema bhakti yes. direct love of krishna the original krishna has also come yeah that's right yeah. So this is unique. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. This is unique. Once in thousand years it happens. Very thousand unique. yugs. Thousand yugs, yeah. Thank you. Thousand yugs. Oh. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Prabhu. No, thank you. Thank you for asking. Okay.